How's it guys, this is Davey FP and welcome back to the Fantasy Premier League video here on my channel. Now in this video, I'll be going over the all-important video of upcoming Game Week 8 and that's going to be my wildcard draft. So if you guys don't know, a bunch of FPL content creators, a bunch of FPL managers over on Twitter have been activating the chip over the past couple of days and that's why this is kind of the hot topic of Game Week 8. Now if you guys have watched my transfer plan of yesterday, you'll know that I currently haven't activated the chip but that doesn't mean that I won't use the wildcard between now and Game Week 8. I just want some more time to absorb some information but there might be some injury concerns that come up over the upcoming days and making these wildcard drafts has actually been super tempting. So in this video as I always do I'll be going over the kind of fixture review giving you guys some teams to target on those wildcards before I show you my current wildcard template. So if that's something you guys are interested in sit back relax and let's get straight into it. So as I always say the fixtures are the bread and butter of any wildcard draft and that's how I'll be going over six teams that I think that you guys should focus on. Now I'll be going over these teams within the next six game weeks. I just kind of like this metric. You guys can take eight game weeks, can take 10 game weeks, whatever you guys want. I just prefer this kind of medium term outlook. So obviously those games will be from game week eight to game week 13. But as I said, you guys can extend that to whatever you want. But I do think six is the minimum. So on screen right now, I'm going to show you guys six teams that I think you guys should focus on. Don't worry, a ton of fixtures are coming up on the screen. I know I'll be going over these one by one and breaking each team down. Now there are a few teams that unfortunately have kind of missed out on this ranking. That doesn't mean that they're bad teams. It just means that you might not be targeting them that much. For example, let's take a Bournemouth. So Bournemouth have some great fixtures on the cards, but the only one option that you guys will target from them is going to be Dom Solanke. So I haven't included them on this list for that reason. But you guys can always target them. There are other teams that have great fixtures coming up. I just want to talk about these six. So let's go over them one by one. As mentioned, the first team, Aston Villa, kind of a no-brainer for the short term, for the medium term. Great fixtures on the cards. And this is coming off a massive victory against Brighton. So kind of a hot topic team at the moment. I know Ollie Watkins scoring a hat-trick and also getting two assists off a kind of one XG involvement or something. But when Ollie Watkins is on form, you guys have to bring him in. So you guys can see some lovely fixtures coming up. A sea of green. Game week 10 to game week 12 is kind of the sweet spot. But game week 8 to 9 aren't too shabby. Now recommendations from those teams, Maddie Cash, any of their defenders, they seem pretty nailed at the back. Otherwise, Diaby or Oli Watkins up front. So I can expect maybe a double up or even a triple up on a wild card. And if you guys don't have Aston Villa assets, you guys can target them on those free transfers. Then the next team is going to be those Spurs assets. Now I do think Spurs are more of a short term punt. They have Luton and Fulham in the next two, Crystal Palace and also Wolves in game week 10 and 12. But I do think you guys should jump on them now for the short term fixtures because they're going to score a massive amount of points. Now defensively and offensively, great assets on the cards. Adogi, Pedro, Porro, even a Romero if you want to go there. Otherwise, Son and Madison are no-brainers. Now you guys can also hold these assets throughout kind of game week 11, game week 13, but you can cross that bridge once you get there and see how Spurs are playing. The next up is going to be the Newcastle assets. So if I do think kind of game week 6, game week 7 was the way to bring them in. I'm not saying they have bad fixtures on the cards, but the fixtures don't look as nice. But game week 9, 10 and 12 also look pretty decent. I think I've kind of changed my mind on having a double up or a triple up from the defensive department. I'll probably go with one or two of their assets at the current moment. As I mentioned, game week 6 and 7 are pretty decent. The next up, we're going to go over the Liverpool assets. Now, Liverpool are kind of an enticing option on a wild card. Gakpo might be missing for a prolonged amount of time. Diego Jota suspended for at least one game. So, could a Darwin Nunes be a punt worth going for on a wild card? But just monitor his kind of injury concerns because he was injured for game week 7. But you guys know who you're going to bring in. It's going to be Mo Salah. So on a wild card, I probably would look to bring him in. There might be a debate to go for of spreading the funds like we had in game week one, but I think most Salah on a wild card is pretty template. Now, would I extend that to kind of going for a trend? Absolutely not. He's too expensive at the current moment. And the Liverpool defense hasn't been that strong. Now, the last two teams are slightly controversial. I know you're probably screaming at your monitor right now. Why do I have Manchester United? I just want to heed some caution here because they do have some nice fixtures. Now, yes, I completely get it. They're simply a terrible team at the current moment. Rashford, Bruno, not getting any FPL points. But let's look at those fixtures from Game Week 9 onwards. I mean, Sheffield United, Fulham, Luton, and Everton, four out of those five fixtures are simply outstanding. You only have to kind of abide by the Game Week 10 one against Man City. But I know I'm the bad guy here for recommending United assets on a Game Week 8 wildcard. I probably would have none of them. But I just want to put this out there and have it as a little bit of a talking point. Now the last team, also a little bit controversial after getting absolutely demolished by Aston Villa on the weekend. It's as Brighton assets, but from game week 10 onwards, they're almost essential. Now yes, a very bad game week 7, but it's not going to change my mind on De Zerbe and that Brighton squad. They're a great team at the end of the day. 
So from game week 10 onwards, a double up, a triple up is what I would look at. And what you guys can do on your wild card for game week 8 is just have those assets on the bench and have them ready for game week 10. Otherwise, just have placeholders. Like I mentioned, you can have an Mbumo from a Toma placeholder, for example. But just keep them in the back of your mind in terms of your planning. But these six teams, out of them, I think that you guys should make a very comfortable kind of wildcard draft. And as mentioned, a bunch of other teams have good fixtures. I just couldn't cover them all in this talking point. Let me know in the comments down below who's your favorite team to target, which teams you guys have a double up or triple up of on those current wildcard drafts. Now the last quick reminder before we talk about the actual draft is going to be the midweek games. We obviously have the games coming up tonight, the Champions League games, as well as Luton versus Burnley. Then we have Conference League games coming up on Thursday, as well as Europa games as well. Just please pay attention to these midweek games. If you guys are on a wildcard, there's no excuse not to kind of pay attention. Team selections, as well as injury news, should be all over your list. I guess that's the nice thing about a wildcard though. You can make changes here and there depending on the news. You just have to pay attention to it. But now let's go over the actual draft as you guys have been waiting for the main topic of this video. Hopefully this draft is up to your standard. But what I would use this draft as is a template and then add your own flavor to it here and there. Now the first thing I want to draw your attention to is the top right hand side. No, that's not a mistake. I had 0.0, .0 left in the bank. So I just could afford this draft. So not only was I creating this video for you guys, I was actually creating this video for myself because I realized if I want to use the wildcard chip, I have to use it quite soon as I can't afford the draft I would want. So if you guys are considering using the wildcard, don't leave it for as late as possible, activate it as soon as possible and catch those price rises. Now the way I'll be going over this wildcard draft is I'll be going from position by position, going from left to right in terms of the starting 11 and detailing why I've selected each player. So let's start off with the goalkeepers. We're going to be going for a cheap combination of Ariola as well as Turner, as at the moment both these two players are featuring. Now Ariola, of course, will be the kind of main choice. West Ham have better fixtures at the current moment, a better defense as a whole. But if they have a bad game, Turner can always come off. Now there might be slight concerns about that Nottingham Forest kind of goalkeeper position. They've just signed a new goalkeeper in the window. Turner hasn't been on the best form, so it might be a waiting game to actually see when he's benched. But on a wild card, with the information in front of us, is going to be this cheap combination to allow you to afford a really stacked attack. Now, if you guys do have some money in the bank, you can always go for another 4.5. But at the moment, I believe Ariola is a better selection than any of the 4.5s. But if you guys do have a favorite goalkeeper, drop them in the comments down below. Now, let's move on to our back line. And unfortunately, because of the injury to Botman, he's lost his place as the cheap Newcastle defender. And I've actually had to go for Dan Byrne because of budget constraints. So no Fabian Shaw here, no Kieran Trippier, they're simply too expensive. And as mentioned, those Newcastle fixtures aren't the best in the world. But I still wanted some coverage, just a great defense overall, and I think the clean sheet should be there. And at 4.5, what's the risk? Now next up, slightly more on the priority list, is me Matty Cash from Aston Villa, 4.9 million. When I created this wildcard draft last week, he was 4.6. Just had so many price rises over the last few days. But as mentioned, the Aston Villa fixtures are simply outstanding. He's a great selection, is playing quite forward. And Alex Moreno is still continuing his rehabilitation. So no excuses on a wildcard not to have Matty Cash. If you guys want to save some value, you can go for a cheaper Aston Villa defender. But I believe he's worth that extra bit of cash. Then another attacking defender is going to be a Dogi from Spurs. If you guys can go for Pedro Porro, he might be a better selection. But as you guys know, I don't have a lot of money in the bank. And therefore, Dogi has to do. Now kind of a more short-term punt. Two very nice fixtures for Spurs in the upcoming game weeks. And then you can always rotate him as you guys please. Now at the current moment, his rotation pair will be a Stupanan. So yes, I am actually going for the 5.1 defender. I know Brighton can't defend at the current moment, but those fixtures upcoming from game week 10 onwards are too hard to ignore. And I believe they might sort it out by that time. So I believe a Stupanan's worth it, kind of bench him for the next two. Then you can play him every single game week. And I still believe that he's quite nailed, even though he was subbed at half time in game week seven. So you guys will kind of rotate this back for whoever's a bad game will simply drop out. For example, a Stupanan for the next two game weeks. Now, in terms of my cheaper option, I've actually gone for Kabore at 4.0 million. You guys can go for anyone you want. The only player I wouldn't go for is Lachelles from Newcastle. So yes, I know that Botman might be out for the next two game weeks. He's a cheap option, 3.9 million, but I don't expect him to play after that. And therefore, you might be locking yourself out of a potential double up or triple up in this Newcastle assets. So yes, at the current moment, I've gone for Kabore. Any 4.0 or cheaper is fine. Just not Lachelles from Newcastle. But the biggest thing about this draft is going to be the midfield apartment. I'm going to start off quite hot with Mo Salah at 12.5 million. Just a great selection on the cards. Now Mo Salah might get a couple price rises before that game week 8 deadline. So just make sure that you guys are watching it. As he is already quite expensive. Now in terms of the current template on the wild card. I believe Mo Salah is worth getting. There might be a debate to go for of spreading the funds. But I believe Liverpool have some great fixtures coming up. And Mo Salah is absolutely nailed in that starting 11. 
One thing I'll just watch out for is that Europa League, just make sure that Mo Salah comes out without an injury, but Klopp might actually rest him on Thursday. At the current moment, the Liverpool attack is just outstanding. They're scoring in simply every game. Mo Salah is quite a creative asset in that team. I would, however, like to see some more output of him because he is quite expensive. But I guess what you're getting is a nailed midfielder in a great attack, and there's not many of those at the current moment. Now, the next two assets, I've actually doubled up on that Spurs attack. I've gone for Son and Madison. I believe the attack is better than the defense. And over those next two fixtures, I can just see so many points. Now, what you guys can do is use Madison or Son as a placeholder. Come game week 10 onwards, you guys can transfer them out if you want to. But I'm pretty sure you guys will be keeping them for the medium term. They just seem like they're playing great football at the moment. Just seem like they're loving the style they're playing. And the most important thing is they're getting those FPL points. So yes, the double up is worth it in my opinion on a wild card. Just make sure both players are fit to play game week 8. Now because of that first three that are absolutely stacked and expensive, I've had to go for some cheaper options. And the first one's Diaby from Aston Villa, a no-brainer in my opinion. Now the only thing to watch out for is that he might be actually injured for game week 8. Apparently he came off with a knock in game week 7, but we haven't had much news if he will be fine. But I kind of expect him to be fine for the upcoming game week. Just monitor the European competitions because Aston Villa are in them. But I think that Diaby will be rested and fine for game week 8. Now you guys would have just seen that Aston Villa's attack is simply outstanding at the current moment. Diaby seems like one of the best attackers from that team, even though game week 7 he might have been a bit quiet. So I just think at his price point, it's a no-brainer. You can even use him as a placeholder if you want to for a Matoma and just see how the next two game weeks go. Then the last option is going to be a little bit of a controversial one. I've actually gone for Gordon from Newcastle. Now the first thing that you guys have to know is that Gordon won't play in game week 8 as he picked up another yellow card and is suspended. So you might be asking me, why do I have him in my wildcard draft then? Well, the reason for this is I'll play one of my strikers just for game week 8. Then Gordon comes in from game week 9 onwards. At 5.6 million, his price point's unbeatable at the moment. The best player at that bracket. You guys can go for Neto if you want to. I just trust Newcastle more. So yes, that's why I say it's a little bit weird. You kind of bring in a player that's suspended. But we do have a plan for him come game week 8. So for the midfield, is pretty tempered, but it's pretty good. Kind of picks itself. You want those Spurs assets. You want Mo Salah. Then you have to go cheaper. Diaby's the best option. Gordon's the best option. And there's your midfield five. And what you guys can do is downgrade Mo Salah, upgrade the rest of the options if you want to. But as I said, I believe the Egyptian's worth it at his more expensive price tag. Now the four department, we're going to start off with Erling Haaland. So yes, this draft does include Erling Haaland. I've seen some kind of concepts of going no Haaland on a wild card. I understand why you might want to do it. Man City's fixtures aren't that great, but at the end of the day, I don't think anyone's going to go without Holland. If you guys are going without Holland, I want to see what that draft looks like. Comment it down below. But as I said, I'll be very surprised come game week 8 if you guys are going to actually do it. So not much needs to be said about Erling Holland at the end of the day. The only thing is if you guys actually need him or not. I believe the fixtures aren't that bad coming up. Yes, without Rodri, they aren't looking that great. But just remember, he'll be back fairly shortly. So I'll be going with the Norwegian, probably captain him every odd game week. I still believe he's worth it. Then our next striker to go for also kind of picks himself. It's Oli Watkins, 8.0 million back at the price tag he started the season with after a massive haul in game week 7. Now you guys will be kind of riding his form here. He has good fixtures coming up. He looks to be in form and he has been pretty consistent this FPL season. Other selections you guys can also look at and Alvarez is quite cheap but I probably wouldn't go there with those tougher fixtures and that's why Oli Watkins is probably the one to look at. So this front two is pretty kind of tempered. The next option, even more tempered, it's Archer from Sheffield United. Definitely the 4.5 to get. Now Archer is actually the reason that we can bring Gordon into our squad. He has Fulham away in game week 8. I believe that you can play him in that fixture and then bench him from game week 9 onwards. So yes, it might be a little bit risky, but I do believe it's worth it. I believe Fulham is a great game on paper. Sheffield United aren't the best attack, but you're only playing him for one game week. But this front three is as tempered as it gets. I've seen this in basically everyone's wildcard drafts. What you guys can actually do is change the formation, go for a 3-4-3 if you want to, but I believe the midfielders offer more value. But as I said, this is my template to go for. What you guys must do now is add your own flavor to it. Tell me if you guys can't afford it, then I'll give you some changes that you can potentially make. And if you have money in the bank, what upgrades are you guys doing? Now, if you guys are on the wild card, comment your drafts down below. Let's get a conversation going. I want to see if your drafts better than mine. And will that tempt me even more to activate the chip? But this is basically going to wrap up the video guys. Hope you guys did enjoy it. Please don't forget to like if you did and subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. Tons of content still coming up. The team selection as well as the ultimate guide. Let's see if I actually activate the chip. Bami Sayov has been Davey FPL and I'm out. Cheers. Bye.